If you look down on our planet, most of the surface is water. We have huge oceans, lots of seas and rivers and lakes, so much water that if you could weigh it all, and scientists have, it would come to 1,450 or one quintillion 450 quadrillion short tons. That's a lot of water, which we need for food, for moisture, to keep our climate stable, not to mention for the beauty. But our oceans do something else for us, something most of us know very little about. They protect us increasingly from ourselves. As you know, for the last few hundred years, we have added extra gas to our skies from factories and power plants and exhaust. And these, these greenhouse gases trap heat and make the Earth's atmosphere a little warmer. The more greenhouse gas there is in the air, the warmer our Earth gets, unless something around us, already here in place, can suck up that extra added heat, tuck it away, and cool us off a little. And luckily, luckily for us, there is indeed such a something. Oceans are great heat sponges. I mean, they're super good at it. More than 90% of the extra heat that we add to our skies every year from greenhouse gases gets absorbed down into the cool, cool oceans and stays there. It's a lovely gift the oceans give us, hiding our heat like that. And scientists have measured how much heat gets swallowed. And I should tell you it's a pretty big number. It's two times 10 to the 23rd joules of heat energy per year, which for those of you who don't know what a joule is, it's the equivalent of, you've seen atomic bombs like the, the one in Hiroshima. That bomb, when it went off, gave off lots of heat, very briefly hitting temperatures hot or hotter than the sun itself. And since 1996, the world's oceans have absorbed the heat equivalent of roughly five Hiroshima bombs exploding every second. Five atomic bombs a second every single second since 1996. That's a lot of heat to add to anything. And the oceans are feeling it. We know this because about 20 years ago, countries all over the world began dropping what looked like giant hypodermic needles into the oceans, where they measure temperature and saltiness and then bob up to the surface and send results directly to satellites in the sky. There are more than 3,000 of them now in the oceans, more all the time. They're called Argos, after Jason and the Argonauts in Greek mythology, and combined with various other measuring projects, they tell us that oceans are getting warmer. The upper 700 feet have already warmed by 1.3 degrees Fahrenheit since 1900. Now, if 1.3 degrees seems like, yeah, come on, that's nothing. Remember how long it takes to warm a pot of tea. I mean, it can take, well, <clears throat> Water has what scientists call a high heat capacity, which means on a sunny day, a dark stone will get very hot almost immediately. Same with the hood of a black car, but a puddle of water? takes more time and needs more sunshine to get even one degree warmer. So it's kind of a surprise that the surface of an enormous puddle, quadrillions of tons of ocean water, has already warmed by more than a degree. Now, the oceans don't look different, but it turns out each extra degree has an effect. For one thing, as water warms, it stores less oxygen. So there are now more and more low oxygen zones, sometimes called suffocation zones, where it's harder for a fish to breathe. So either they die or mostly they flee to areas where it's still safe to breathe. But that makes for a more crowded and not very healthy ocean. Warmer waters change chemistry. So animals have more trouble getting the minerals they need to build shells and coverings 
leaving them increasingly naked and in danger, and that is starting to happen too. And when water gets warmer, it expands and swells, flooding the shores, eating into land. And warmer water puts more moisture in the air, which makes more rain and more wind and more damage. And yet, yet, here is our predicament. For so long, the oceans have been our silent ally, helping us to stay cool more than trees do, or, or fields, or ice, or even air. All those things, they absorb heat too, but put them on a graph. And here's how much heat air absorbs. Here's how much heat land absorbs. Here's how much heat ice absorbs. And here, <laughs> here's how much heat the oceans absorb. It is a, a gigantic gift, cooling us year after year for free. Well, well no, not exactly for free, not anymore. Because the oceans sitting on all that heat are beginning to change. And if we keep adding greenhouse gases to the sky, going forward, we're gonna have to pay a new price. Because as big and as vast as the oceans are, the heat we have added has hit the point where those generous tons and tons and tons of ocean water are now saying, enough. <laughs>